In the first half of the 21st century, the world of science needed a guinea pig. That guinea pig was a man. For 40 days and 40 nights, this man has given up his ordinary life. He has scoured the horoscopes from 20 astrologers. His task, to follow their advice, to ignore speculation, prediction and guesswork, but at all times, to follow instructions and pursue luck. Is this a wise way to live one's life? That is what we're about to discover. This is the human laboratory. This is Dave Gorman's important astrology experiment. Hello, my name is Dave Gorman, I'm a Pisces, and welcome to the fourth part of my important astrology experiment. Throughout the course of our experiment, I have rigorously obeyed my horoscopes. My twin brother, our control experiment, has ignored his. Whose life is the happiest? That's the question we're asking. To answer it, we have to measure happiness. To do this, we have an astrologically balanced jury of juries here, 12 groups of 12 people, each comprising one of each and every star sign. To guide them, we have a panel of three experts in the fields of love, health, and wealth. A veritable triple-decker bus of advice. <laughs> Nick, are you ready? Ready? Panel, are you ready? Ready. Jury of juries, are you ready? Ready! Then let the experiment begin. <laughs> now, on day 19, I didn't think any of the 20 astrologers were going to offer a firm instruction. There were lots of you may and you might, but then again, you might not. But then, at the foot of astrologer number 16, Gordon Vincent's column, I saw... Yes, think about someone you used to know. Who should I think about? Well, clearly, someone with the initials P.S. <laughs> there was an old friend of mine from my childhood, Paul Smithyman. We'd been very close friends, but I'd lost touch with him and we hadn't seen each other in over ten years. Then again, I had once had a letter read out on TV by Philip Schofield. <laughs> Which one would I spend the evening thinking about? I think when you see this footage, you'll know exactly who I was thinking about. <laughs> it's spooky, isn't it? You can almost read my mind. <laughs> On day 20, astrologer number three, Jacqueline Vigor, wrote... Indulge someone. Share a favourite pastime with a loved one. Tonight, pick up the tab. In the last 19 days, it sometimes felt as though the 20 astrologers were conspiring to keep me away from my girlfriend. <laughs> At last, the chance to do something normal, a favourite pastime, a romantic dinner for two. I'd be very happy to pick up the tab. It's been a really romantic evening, thank you. There's just one thing spoiling me. Do you lot have to film this? <laughs> Despite the fact that the crew were there, we had a nice evening, and importantly, we were able to talk. So much better than the night before, when Greta was talking, but I kept telling her to be quiet because I was busy thinking about Paul Smithy. <laughs> I hope we could do it again soon. Unfortunately, on day 21, astrologer number 11, Mystic Meg, wrote... Do contact that pal on your mind. Contact that pal on your mind. And there was a pal on my mind, the pal I'd been told to think about on day 19. I knew I had to contact Paul Smithyman. However, on the same day, astrologer number 15, Hilary Todd, said... Make an extra special effort today. A letter means more than a phone call, but a visit means even more. Do everything that's within your powers. I had to visit Paul Smithyman. We hadn't been in touch for over ten years. I managed to find his mother's phone number. Hi, is that Mrs Smithyman? I haven't seen you for years. No, I'm just trying to get in touch with Paul. He's, he's where? All right, it was lovely talking to you. Thanks. All right, cheers. Bye. Right, um... We're, we're going to go to New York. <laughs> 
No wonder we were no longer in touch. <laughs> Paul had moved to New York. New York, as you might well know, is a long way away. <laughs> However, he was the pal on my mind. A visit means more than a letter or a phone call, and I had to do everything that was within my powers. I could, so I did. at Paul's at half past 11 at night. <laughs> it was good to see Paul. We hadn't seen each other in so long. We obviously had a lot to talk about. I had a lot of questions for him. I wanted to know what had led him to New York and so on. He had a lot of questions for me, like why on earth after 10 years I'd suddenly travelled <laughs> thousands of miles to see him and turned up unannounced at his apartment shortly before midnight. So I had to explain the experiment to him, which isn't easy. <laughs> and then I noticed that midnight had now passed. It was a new day. I decided the best way of explaining the experiment to Paul was with an example. Uh, uh, that. Enter. Pisces uh, today. Oh, Pisces, you may be feeling exhausted today, but you've no one to blame but yourself. <laughs> you've been a busy little fish of late, and it's possible your home life has been neglected. <laughs> Now is the time to put things right. <laughs> it's important that you spend as much time as possible at home today. <laughs> Lovely to see you. <laughs> Just find another astrologer and make something up. I've got to spend as much time as possible at home. But that wouldn't be as much time as possible. Oh, right. If we just go to the airport and we'll get the first flight home. <laughs> With hindsight, we shouldn't have left Paul's quite so abruptly. We got to the airport to discover there were no flights to London until nine in the morning. <laughs> It was 9 o'clock at night when our flight landed at Heathrow. I was home at 10.27. I spent one hour and 33 minutes <laughs> at home on day 22, but that was as much as possible. Now, on day 23, I woke up jet-lagged to discover that astrologer number 8, Kelly Fox, had written... Commit your efforts to making the imaginary into something real. Now, maybe, if I'd been in a saner state of mind, I'd have thought imaginary creatures aren't real, and you can't make them real. But I wasn't in a sane state of mind. <laughs> I'd flown to New York and back with no sleep. My jet lag had jet lag. My head had turned to mush. I was seriously trying to work out how I could bring an imaginary creature to life. Which imaginary creature? I was inspired by my trip to New York. <laughs> My mission that day was to make a unicorn. As I left the house, unicorns were imaginary. Pretty soon, they would be real. OK, right, listen. Come in. Right. You lot, just go and distract the farmer, OK? <laughs> and just keep him busy. Don't let him see the horse. Well, how can we distract the farmer? I mean, how you've got a camera. Crew. Dan, you just go up like Mr. Why BBC just, and talk to him. Because I'm messing with the horse. <laughs> <laughs> just just get, get in front of me, go and talk to him. You've got a crew. Excuse me. Hiya. Uh, we're from uh, uh, BBC yeah. uh, TV. Hello. And 
We're just wondering if we could ask you a couple of questions about farming. And farmers. <laughs> uh, what's what's uh, what's good about being a farmer? <laughs> Nothing really. It's hard work, you know. Hard work. Yeah. And, and to, but you work with animals a lot. I mean, that's kind of that's good, isn't it? Yeah. What's your, what's your favourite animal? My favourite animal, I think it's a sheep. The sheep. Yeah. Ah, and, and why? What's good about sheep? Um. Well, they don't mess you around, you know. You know. Right, they're solid. Yeah. Yes, yeah. what? going to receive complaints for this, <laughs> but let me reassure you, no animals were hurt in the making of that unicorn. <laughs> if anything, I'd like to think that one horse has been promoted. <laughs> as proud as I was, I couldn't rest on my laurels there. There were further instructions that day. Astrologer number nine, Russell Grant. Exercise is also an excellent way to stave off depression. wasn't over. Russell had more to say. Escape from the madding crowd and detox. So I headed into the right part of town and asked around to see what was the quickest way to get the best detox. Um, not sure how I feel about this. We've, um, I've just checked and they can do, um, a detox thing, but it's, um, something I'm not entirely comfortable about it's um they do they do colonic irrigation <laughs> yes you heard me right colonic irrigation that's irrigation of the colon <laughs> not somebody else's colon not russell grant's colon my colon <laughs> russell grant he's an aquarius what did astrologer number nine russell grant write for aquarius that day what advice did he offer himself on day 23 this you might take out your disappointment and answer the question. If this experiment existed purely for the sake of a TV show, I would pretend that this horoscope had never been written. We'd turn round and go back to the office secure in the knowledge that we'd already got some footage that day. We'd made a unicorn. <laughs> That's all we need to give you people a story. But that isn't the reason this experiment exists. It exists because I genuinely want to find the truth about astrology. I either follow the rules and obey every instruction given, or I might as well give up. I am not a quitter. So tell me, Dave, I'd like to just get an idea of what you have for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Do you get a good variety of vegetables? And how much plain water do you drink a day? How frequent are your bowel motions? How many times a day do you go? Uh, uh, right. <laughs> I will be introducing the speculum inside inside you, approximately two inches. So two attachments. The water will be coming in through the smaller tube into the bowel. It's very gentle, uh, very painless. The larger tube is to carry away the waste and gases and mucus and so on. So I need you to lie down <laughs> on the bowel. Oh, if you just turn it over onto, uh, onto your left side and just take a nice deep breath. <laughs> I'm just going to start introducing the water now. Oh, oh, no. How's that going to you so far? <clears throat> You're starting to release a little bit uh, more substance. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's my pleasure. <laughs> At the end of that, our cameraman, Jim, said to me, Dave, that must have taken a lot of guts. <laughs> and I'm still not sure if he was talking about me or the machine. <laughs> However, I genuinely do not want this to be a source for scatological humour. That's too easy. And you know what? Actually doing that wasn't easy. And what's more, afterwards, I felt good. I felt very good. The next day, loads of people said I was looking healthy. A couple of people said my skin was looking clearer. I never thought I'd end up saying this, 
but thank you, Russell Grant. That's your innocent victim saying a sincere thank you. I genuinely believe it did me good. Nick, how did you fare on days 19 to 23? Uh, I played five-a-side football on day 19. On day 20, unfortunately, the boiler broke. We had to get an emergency plumber in, and he replaced the whole system. OK. Sounds expensive. Brilliant. So, <laughs> let's see what our resident experts make of these five days. As I'm sure you're aware, we are using the metric pleasure decimal gladness system of measuring happiness. Every unit of happiness is equal to one pound sterling. That's about 1.7 euros. <laughs> our expert in love is, of course, Denise Robertson. Denise, please tell me, what do you make of it all? Your brother, he's such the perfect man. Uh, and yet your priorities are not good. <laughs> However, if you could put the creative energy into your love life that you put into making that unicorn, I would be a happier woman. OK, well, ladies and gentlemen, bear in mind we are talking about a five-day block this time. Please cast your love votes now. Got to vote in the right order. It's me before the control experiment. While the computer goes to work on those figures, let's consult our expert in health, Dr Hilary Jones. Hilary, let us know. They say the uh, bridge between genius and insanity is easily crossed, and I think you may have crossed that bridge. <laughs> Two long-haul flights, you're risking DVTs, all that stress, all that fatigue, and then there's the colonic irrigation. I think that's astrology's way of saying that you're full of toxins. <laughs> Now, experts would say there's no use for it, there's no need for it, but can't do any harm. So, you know, equals on that one. Nick hasn't done his normal exercise, but, you know, he's nice and stable. OK. You heard the doctor. I've crossed that bridge. I am a genius. <laughs> Please cast your health votes now. As always, we're measuring love, health and wealth. Alvin, how do we go? I'm so nauseous at the moment. I'm just trying to maintain myself. I'm doing a lot of irrigation, to be honest with you. How do you think I feel? Uh, yes. <laughs> plumbing one, plumbing the other plumbing. Uh, the trip to New York. <laughs> <laughs> and the colonic irrigation, you're down 412 pounds. However, for the first time, Nick has exceeded you. The boiler cost him 1,487 pounds. OK. Well, thank you, Alvin. <laughs> we know what the experts think, but let's see what the jury have made of it all. Let's have a look at the numbers. These are your votes. Love plus health plus wealth equals happiness. <laughs> that is quite an unusual result. I am minus 217 happy. Nick, our control experiment shows that by ignoring my horoscopes, I would have been even worse. Minus 1,290 happy. So in actual fact, following astrology has left me happier over this five days than I would have been. To the tune of... 1,073 points. It's actually a huge leap in my happiness. Let's see how this affects the graph. Go on. Go on. Get in there. Yes! Yes! Minus 898 points. That means we can't prove anything either way. But at least, for the first time in a long time, I'm heading in the right direction. Now... I know I said I didn't want my detox to be the subject of scatological humour, but I don't think anyone had told the world of astrology, because the next day, day 24, astrologer number two, Astro Marilene, wrote this. Expand your circle. <laughs> Expand your circle of friends to invite people into your home. I rang a load of my friends, and I invited them over to mine that afternoon. But obviously, they're already in my circle of friends. I needed fresh blood. I did what any man would do. I started a leafleting campaign. <laughs> Just trying to expand my circle of friends. Maybe see you later. Thanks very much. 
As you can see, it was a simple and very friendly message. Below that is my phone number and my address. I've pixelated that out because this is telly and I'm not an idiot. <laughs> I was confident that with ten posters and a thousand leaflets out there, I would get a few takers. Right, who's for tea, who's for coffee? Tea would be lovely. <laughs> Hey, you're looking pretty good. You're looking light. Skin's looking good. <laughs> Duncan was already a friend of mine, thanks to instructions given to me back on day two. And while it was a pleasure to catch up with him again, I knew that I hadn't yet obeyed the horoscope. I hadn't expanded my circle of friends. But then, I checked my answering machine. While I'd been out leafleting, someone had left this message. many leaflets um, in the park today. Um, consider me your friend, Dave. Um, I don't know when we'll meet, um, because I have a life. <laughs> now, unfortunately, Steve had forgotten to leave his number, but I dialed 1471 <laughs> and was lucky enough to find it. I rang him that day, I left a message. Strangely, he didn't get back. I've rung him almost every day since. <laughs> you know, I don't know what he does for a living, because he never picks up. Doesn't matter what hour of the day I ring, early in the morning, late at night, <laughs> he's never in. If you're watching, Steve, give us a ring. <laughs> Let's have that cup of tea. I know Duncan's dying to meet you as much as I am. <laughs> he talks of almost nothing else. It's swimming and Steve, Steve and swimming. Do you think Steve likes swimming? I bet he does. <laughs> anyway, moving on. On day 25, astrologer number 20, David Wells, wrote... Any cheap magician can produce a rabbit from his hat, but you can go one step further. I needed a trick that was one step better than pulling a rabbit from a hat. Not three steps better, that's too good. Not two steps better, that's too good. Not as good as, and definitely not worse than. It had to be exactly one step better. Hello, my name's Geoffrey Durham, and I'm a magician, and I think I'm a Leo. Well, this is probably the nearest I get to a rabbit in a hat. I don't know, it's, it's a bit little, though. Have a okay. go at this. Okay. okay, here we go. How's that? <laughs> what do you think of that? About the same. We want to go one step further than the rabbit from okay. the hat. OK. This is a newspaper, right? Yeah. And what I'm going to ask you to do is just look at this bit of the newspaper here, just sort of there. Yeah? yeah? yeah. How's about that? Okay. Is that better? <laughs> That's about two or three, we reckon. OK, try this. <laughs> now, watch. You don't have to talk through this one, because it's completely visual. Look at that. Is that... Oh, I like that. Do you like that? I do like that a lot. <laughs> Have you got any other cut? Oh, bases? I know what you can do, yes. I know what you can yeah? do. Yeah? Yep, yep, yep. The fork thing it. is working. I've got it, yeah. I've got it. Look at that fork, see? Yeah. Now watch, watch very, very carefully. Watch. Watch me bend it. Now, I'm not doing anything, am I? I'm not That's bending weird. it, am I? I'm not using any of my muscle. That is very, very <laughs> strange. It is, isn't it? Find the balance point. No, you're not quite there, are you? Yes. No, it's not there yet, is it? Come on. Talking to you won't help. Yes. Yes. could bend cutlery. It's fair to say I was quite happy. I felt good. Now, on day 26, astrologer number 11, Mystic Meg, wrote... Luck looks in a case not opened in a year. I immediately rang New Scotland Yard. <laughs> I spoke to the police. I told them that if there was an unsolved case, they'd closed some time ago, and they wanted a member of the public to investigate it on their behalf. Who knows, a fresh pair of untrained eyes might be just the ticket. I was available all day. They said no. <laughs> of course, there is another kind of case. 
I headed down to the lost property office at Euston train station to see if they'd let me look through some long lost suitcases. Now, to be honest, this is basically some footage of a man looking through some suitcases. <laughs> so to save wasting your time, we've speeded it up. Um, oh, I hey, we have something. <laughs> look. Uh, a golf tee and a golf ball. It's a monogrammed golf ball. It says M-R-W. I've got a lucky ball. I've got a lucky golf ball. I found a golf ball, monogrammed M-R-W, and a T. I had no idea what it all meant until the next day when I saw that astrologer number 15, Hilary Todd, had written... Try out a new sporting activity. <laughs> and don't worry, as long as you look the part, you'll enjoy it. Hello. My name is Jeremy Riley. I'm golf professional at the Buckinghamshire Golf Club. And I'm a Gemini. With golf mastered, it was time to move on. <laughs> and we must move on ourselves. Let's see how the control experiment fared. Nick, how do you get on on days 24 to 27? Uh, I went running on days 24 and 25. And on day 27, I went with a friend to watch Liverpool play Everton, uh, where they got a 1-1 draw. OK. Well, Denise, what do you have to say to the jury about our love and friendship? <sighs> well, not a lot. If you want... A lonely old age, unlike your brother, bending spoons, missing golf balls, and being humoured by Duncan Goodhue, you are going the right way. <laughs> OK, she's not impressed. I spent time with my friend Duncan and I made a new friend, Steve. Ladies and gentlemen, cast your love votes now. OK, now, Dr Hillary. How do we do? Golf's good. I approve of golf. Fresh air, nice scenery, relaxing, satisfying, moderate exercise, not too vigorous. Yeah, I'll go for that. OK. Ladies and gentlemen, cast your health votes now. Now, Alvin, the figures? The figures are better than they were. You're no longer looking like a financial fool. <laughs> Before, if you were a share, I'd sell you. <laughs> <laughs> this time, your total loss is only 83 pounds compared with Nick's, which is 77 pounds. OK, well, finances sound close. Let's see how the votes went. Here they are. Love plus health plus wealth equals happiness. Ooh, there you go, harsh. One, one point. <laughs> one point for health. You... OK, well, <laughs> I am minus 36 happy, while Nick is 151 happy. So, over these four days, I am... 187 points less happy than I would have been. I think it's going to be close. Let's take a look at how it changes the graph. Oh! Ooh. There I am, minus 1,085 points. We're proving that following one's horoscope is foolish. However, that is after 27 days, and the experiment lasts for 40 days. To find out how things progressed, you'll have to join me next week for the next part of my important astrology experiment. Good night. <laughs> You spent 38 pounds to look like a pumpkin. Who's <laughs> that? It's very soft now. Your brother has normal urges. You play bingo. <laughs>